but you gotta realize what are we really doing here? We're taking this waste that normally we would inefficiently go spread out onto a field and I'm using animals, right? I'm using these little animals that will work all day long at turning this from waste into black gold. Now we've all been told how hard horses can be on the land and how wreck, how much they can just wreck good ground, right? A lot of, that's why a lot of cattle people hate horses, right? Because they're way tougher on the ground than cattle are. But as a horse person myself, as you might be as well, there is sustainable ways to manage our horses to where we can improve the land. We can make sure that we are maximizing the land to, keep, to be able to give our horses the best life possible. And as a professional in the past, I have been leasing facilities and I have been able to take by just sheer pasture management, right? By just surely not overstocking each pasture and being mindful of what season it is, how fast the grass is growing, and all of those things. I've been able to make sure that when I'm leasing facilities from people, that I'm not, that I'm taking care of the ground as much as I can. But there's more that we can do. There's more as horsemen and horse people that we can do to make sure that we're taking care of the ground that our horses live on. That way we can maximize their health, we can maximize their enjoyment of being outside. And now that we have our own facility, I want to share with you what we are doing to, sh to be able to sustainably care for our horses. For us, what is it doing, right? It is giving our horses the best life they possibly can have. So when they are outside like they are right now, which is why all the stalls are empty, and I'm getting the stalls, we've been getting the stalls cleaned out here, and that way when they're outside, we're taking care of that ground that they're living on to the best of our ability. That way we're not, no, we're not, we're not destroying it. Right? We're actually adding to it so that next season, next year, that grass, that ground is that much healthier. It is providing that much more nutrients. It is producing that much more grass, not because I need more horses, but so that the horses that we do have are able to get a solid diet from that ground. Right, Because I try to keep things as natural, as sustainable as possible when managing my horses, even though pretty much all of our horses in our barn right now are performance horses. They are top tier athletes. So I am taking a very sustainable, very natural approach to caring for some of the top, top athletes. And so whether you have horses that can compete on those high levels, or you have a horse that is merely a trail horse, an enjoyment horse, maybe you're only riding them a couple times a month or a couple times a week, right? You still want to be able to provide the very best life possible for those horses. So let's go ahead. I'm going to show you around a little bit. I'm going to show you a few key components to this system of sustainably taking care of them. And what we have found as results, of course, I mentioned the horses, right? I mentioned how the life of the horses can be better, but our lives are better, right? Our lives are better. We're seeing a decrease in bucks. We're actually able to, I'm actually utilizing the method I'm using is able to feed my family. And I think that for almost every, every person that takes care of their own horses at home could do this and even other professionals like myself could implement a very similar system to this to be able to take care of that. So let's get into it. So I've got you guys here on the side of the barn. This is where we had our hay previously stacked, right? We had all those pallets over there. I pulled those pallets up earlier today and I've been scraping all this hay into a big pile. This hay is pretty dusty. It's got probably, it doesn't have much mold on it because it's so dry here in Texas. But it's not, it's, it's a little dusty. It's not exactly what I want to go feed to my horses because it could get in the respiratory system and it may not feel that great. So what am I going to do with it? Well, most people take this hay, they throw it into a spreader and they just go spread it out, right? This hay, right, is, it's a good, it's been really good quality hay. It's a mix between grass hay and alfalfa hay and it's from Kentucky. We brought it with us down here. But the other thing about this hay is that it's gonna, if I just spread it out on the ground, it's gonna take a while for it to decompose, right? It's gonna act like straw. It's gonna take forever. And if we don't get some rain soon, it, it's probably gonna blow away before it actually breaks down. So what we're actually doing in this area, and I might do a separate video on this, is that we're outfitting this to where we can have bulk shavings brought in, right? Because we've been buying shavings by the bag, it's a good way to go broke. So we're bringing in uh, a dump truck load of shavings I'm gonna put and fix this area off, which is why I'm cleaning this out, okay? And so all of this hay though is going to be going exactly where we've been taking the manure and all the shavings and the urine and all the stall waste out. So let's head that way. 
Now I mentioned that I'm not spreading all this stall waste straight on the ground. Why? Because it's gonna take way too long to break down. And as I mentioned, I love this little manure spreader and I maybe I didn't show this to you yet, but this little ground driven manure spreader right here, it has um, a rotating wheel in the back and in the front, it's got a little filter system where it has to get that manure and anything in here into really fine little pieces. So as far as like it breaking down, this is a great little setup, but we've just basically been using it as a wagon to get the manure where we want it to go. So let's go ahead and over over there. Let's jump down here, making a little pit stop. We'll let you guys meet these girls. I'm gonna feed them some dinner right before we get to the main attraction. This is by the name of Phyllis. This is Phyllis, and there's Sage. All right. So we got Sage here. She's a really nice bay run there from the uh, Freilich Ranch out in Montana. And then this red roan filly who is related to my filly, my cow horse filly, June. They're by the same sire, Pepto Shine, standing at Big Creek Land and Cattle Cove. So, so these guys are out here growing up, getting ready to start, get Sage started. And horses will be horses. So Sage, that was a little much. So uh, we might have to start feeding them a little bit separately, so. All right. Now, I will add, they've been staying here for a few minutes now, and I'm pretty sure that Sage did that, chomping on Phyllis just for the camera, because that's the first time I've ever seen them do that. Of course, now they're eating peacefully. All right, so we are here, guys. You can see that we got our garden in behind us. This is the start of the garden. We're going to be adding more plants and more garden space to it. I told my wife that our life is basically going to be divided up between uh, horses are a large, large piece of our lives right now. It has been. It's how we make our living. Um, it's the industry that we're involved in and all those good things. But there's three H's that we kind of joked we're going to start living by, which is horses. We got homesteading and homeschooling because we have our first little one on the way due in just about a month. And then those three H's, horses, homesteading, and homeschooling are kind of going to be our focuses. But of course, serving you guys, bringing as much value as possible. So when we first got here, this garden bed needed quite a bit of tending. So what did I do is I brought a lot of that stall waste out here that had all those shavings in it. We used it as a mulch, right? And I add to this pretty frequently, which has helped keep the weeds down. But here is the big thing that I want to show you guys okay now we have been putting piles of the stall waste here and you're like great what are you you're just gonna show me a big pile of waste well what we're gonna be doing right here is building our chicken coop okay we're gonna be building a permanent chicken run this will be their home permanent home in the winter but we're gonna keep a lot of our egg layers because as much as I love pasture raised um, there's quite a few hawks flying around here and I'm not particularly interested in feeding the wildlife. So what we're going to be doing is a deep litter bedding system right here. And you guys see, this is little Wayne. He is a camera hog. Every time he sees the camera, he has to come over. So this is little Wayne. You guys have followed for a while, seen him, seen him since the time he was a foal. And there we go. Camera's trying to die. So this is little Wayne. He's two years old. He's getting, he's an awesome little horse. But what we're doing here is building our chicken coop right here. And we're going to be able to use those chickens as our little composters. So we're taking anything of the, of the kitchen scraps and it's going to go right here. We're going to be able to use this to recycle a lot of our stall waste to provide bedding for these chickens. And then over a period of a couple months to an entire year, they will slowly, they'll turn this over. It'll keep, they'll keep it aerobic. So they can keep air into the bedding. It's gonna decompose a lot better. And because horse manure is fairly basic, right? It's a lower pH and not, and chicken manure is very high in terms of its pH, right? It's pretty more acidic then it's gonna be a nice balance so that when they break this down, we're gonna be able to take this and either spread it right into the garden or garden beds, or we're gonna be able to take this and be able to spread it directly out on these fields to where it's gonna give the ground the maximum amount of nutrient value to where when it rains, it will go straight into the ground and the grass that we're trying to grow for our horses will be at its highest level. 
So we've still got to get the chicken coop up itself. I've been looking at multiple ways of doing it. And what I think I'm gonna end up doing is just building a permanent fence structure, but their actual coop that they're gonna live in, I might change my mind on this, is going to be mobile because I have a feeling throughout the year, I'm gonna want to move the chickens a few times. We have some front garden beds that have been neglected before we bought the place and it needs some topsoil. So what we're actually gonna be doing is these loads right now from here for the next couple of days or weeks is going to be going into what was the front garden beds because we're gonna do a fall crop of vegetables and I wanna use all this manure to build up that that's topsoil and be able to create topsoil but we're going to use that to build it up and i want to be able to be able to take that chicken the mobile little house that they have to live in at night i want to be able to move that because i my, these horses are coming up from everywhere i gotta so this is june she is by the same sire as phyllis well the sun's coming through june bug and this is june you've enjoyed your day off it's sunday here so the horses got to stay outside today and enjoy the 100 degree heat. Okay, good girl. We're coming in the morning, back to work. All right, so anyway, <laughs> as I was saying, that we're gonna be able to move those chickens from their permanent structure into maybe even to some of those garden beds for them to be able to turn it over, be able to put their excrement in there. That way they can inject some nitrogen in there and really give the plants the top health. But you gotta realize, what are we really doing here? We're taking this waste that normally we would inefficiently go spread out onto a field and I'm using animals, right? I'm using these little animals that are gonna give me eggs every single day. Some of them will be turned into meat, right? That will fill the freezer to feed my family. And I'm able to use these little animals that will work all day long at turning this from waste into black gold. They're gonna spend their entire days turning that over, making it into a more valuable product that I can then reuse instead of maybe just putting it out on the field and then inefficiently breaking down and getting very little nutrient value for it, which basically means I'm wasting opportunity and wasting a resource that I could have, right? This is no longer is a waste and it's no longer, it's now a resource, it's now an asset because I can use those little chickens to break it down, to turn it into that black gold. And then I can choose, do I wanna sell it, right? Do I wanna turn this nice GMO free organic black compost that would make plants grow twice as big as they possibly could, right? And I could sell that or probably not with that exact literature, but I could sell it or I could put it on my fields to make my fields better. I could put it in my garden and help my plants grow better. I could do all of those things because now it's actually worth something. And it all came from my horses that notoriously, you know, that's, that's a chore. But every day that I clean stalls, I think about it and I'm like, I'm not just cleaning stalls. I'm, I'm taking this resource that I can recycle and turn it into something even more valuable. And I'm not even having to do the work. I got chickens that are doing the work for me, right? So it's all about building simple, sustainable systems. And there's no reason that any horse person couldn't implement this, right? And you got to figure out like, how many horses do you have? And how many chickens do you need? And maybe I can share, maybe if you guys are interested, you can let us know down in the comments, if that's some interest of like, you're like, okay, I got three horses. How many chickens do I need? Right? And I can walk you through the math of what we're doing uh, to be able to make sure that you got a simple, sustainable system that is providing for your horses, providing for your family and all that good stuff. But nonetheless, guys, this is the end of today's vlog. I'm going in to get some dinner and we'll talk to you very soon.